Hey guys, thanks for tuning us in for this 11th episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests in this episode are new country artist Ashley Barron, host of American Ninja Warriors, Matt Iceman, country singer-songwriter Connor Sweet, New York Times best-selling author Jeff Benedict, and legendary drummer and friend of the show, Sheila E. If you would, please take the time to subscribe, drop a like, comment, leave some feedback, and please share with your friends. Our first guest is country artist Ashley Barron, who'll visit about her new music and let us in on her musical background and influences. First off, Ashley, thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show again. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you so much for having me. I, I had to refresh your memory. I, I was like, I, I, whenever they asked about uh, about having you on, I was like, you know, I got to have her on now that she's got a single. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember the first time you, you were still working, we were getting ready for that first single. And uh, for, for you having a, a new single out there right now, what's what's it like and how different is it, uh, the, the whole environment of music for you? Yeah, you know, it's, like you said, it's different. Um, usually for an artist, it's just, it's, I don't want to say easier, but there's just something different about it when we release a single and we're already out there playing live and we get to bring it to the fans um, first like that. So this is different. Um, this time, everything is really online-based, but it's crazy how much that's really worked out for the single and being able to push it online and having all these different streaming platforms. Um, it's coming together pretty well. And and obviously, being being younger than I am, obviously, social media comes a, <laughs> comes a little easier for you. So uh, how, how has that helped in this transition time? Hey, I still struggle. I cannot figure out Twitter for the life of me. Hashtags confuse me. <laughs> um, no, but it's it's been great. I've got an awesome team behind me who's helping me put all that stuff together and get ready to bring it to the fans and bring it to them, you know, easy and accessible. So it's it's been awesome. And what is the biggest thing that that, that, that you have learned about yourself over the last five months? Oh, gosh. Well, I think a couple. I never realized I am a little bit of a neat freak. <laughs> I think that I have never slowed down enough to, like, pay attention to that. I'm usually always living out of a suitcase and going from one city to the next. <laughs> so being at home has taught me that a little. Um, and randomly, I started running. So I, I don't know if I consider myself a full-on runner yet, but I am loving the freedom it brings to your mind <laughs> and and what is what's on what's on the playlist for you as you're running what's what's your favorite uh, what's the favorite new song other, uh, obviously other than let me go oh my gosh well i my playlist is like all over the place i've got some old school country on there i've got pop on there all the way to rock into a little some hardcore metal just to get my blood pumping <laughs> Now, where did, uh, for you, I know we, we shared this a couple of years ago when we visited, but wanted to give a, an opportunity just to share a little bit about the background for the music for you, where where the inspiration lies in, in your life and where you knew that uh, that music was the, the only thing for you. Yeah, um, well, so I was, I'm the youngest of um, four kids, and I was raised on music. I mean, my family has just all, all kinds of music. We've just really, like, it's was always just huge in all of my memories. Uh, every time I look, think back, like there's a song that I put with something. And as a family as a whole, we really just, we loved that old school 90s country. And then as I grew with my sisters, um, I just, I love, I've always looked up to Miranda Lambert and Eric Church and Drew, you know, they were huge inspiration for me. And then for my dad and my brother, I uh, was raised on rock and roll. My dad is a huge CCR fan, Rolling Stones, um, all those guys. And so I think that with everything that I was raised on um, is really where um, my songs come from and the sound comes from. And I just, I don't, there was no defining moment when I knew that music was just going to be my thing. It just was something that's always been there and always presented itself first and foremost, before, you know, even before I went to college, I had an opportunity to pursue music. And so things like that, I, that's just kind of how I knew like, okay, it's, it's not stopping. It's just, it keeps moving and it keeps growing and moving forward. And 
I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> and, and one of the questions I, I, I've, I've asked every singer-songwriter that I've had on over the last few months is, whenever we're going through the times of turmoil and, and the heaviness in the world, do you find that uh, a, a time that, that breeds inspiration, or is that one that maybe you get a little closed up, if you will? So that's, that's ironic. When I was um, just in Nashville last, um, I had a writing session, and... We also, during that time, we're, we're trying to finish our, uh, the, the whole album. And so we've gone to the point where we, you know, we have all the songs and we started to sit down and go through all of them and really analyze them and which ones should be on the album. And I never realized, like I said, I, I was raised on rock and roll. I was raised on all that rock and country. And that's what I love to sing and perform. However, for some reason, when I write, it's uh, just when all my emotions come out and I have a lot of ballads and things like that. And so I would say, yes, during this time, it does bring that out in me, even though I don't realize it's more of a subconscious thing. And, and Ashley, if, if folks want to find out more information, not only about uh, the, the, the new single, but about tour dates as, as those become available, social media and also merch and the new music, where can, uh, where can folks find more information? Yeah, of course. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Ashley Barron Official. And then also check out my um, website at AshleyBarronOfficial.com. Find more information? Visit AshleyBarronOfficial.com. Next up, had the chance to visit with one of my favorites, Matt Iceman, who's here to visit about the upcoming season of American Ninja Warrior, which starts on Monday, September 7th on NBC. Always good to have our friends back, and, and I know that uh, Matt Iceman is excited because uh, we got a new season coming up on Monday. Matt, always good to visit with you again, my friend. Thanks, Cameron. Yeah, season 12 of American Ninja Warrior, and uh, considering everything that's going on and that we were able to pull this off, feels like it's going to be a special season. Speaking of it, it being special, I mean, how cool is it to to, to, to lift the spirits? Because we know that's, that's what the show has done for, for now 11 seasons, now going into 12. and uh, But but right now, <laughs> spirits need lifted more than ever, right, Matt? Yeah, and, and honestly, Cameron, i, I got to say, this show, before it lifted everyone else's spirits, it really lifted my spirits. We, yeah. were, we were due to start this season uh, back on March 12th. We were in Los Angeles. We had our course set up at Universal Studios. The ninjas were there. The crowd had, had flown in. Everyone was ready to go. And then the day before was when the dominoes started to fall. The NBA canceled games. Um, NCAA canceled March Madness. And our season got put on hold. And we weren't sure if we were going to be able to do it. Um, and then we figured out a way. We flew to St. Louis. We went inside the Dome at America Center where the Rams used to play, mm-hmm. and we were testing. We got tested two weeks before, a week before, the day before. The day we landed, we were tested every three days, and we were in strict quarantine where we would go right from uh, the Dome back to the hotel and into our rooms, and it was amazing. It was amazing that we could pull it off, and, and I know when we were there shooting, it we knew how lucky we were because, like so many, we were locked. We were locked in our homes. And to go from being locked here in in LA, where you couldn't get a haircut, you could go into restaurants, you you could barely go shopping, to go from that to shooting the show uh, in a dome, and it was it was amazing to get to do it. I was just, I, I know Akbar and I, we just kept saying, I can't believe we're getting to do this. So we're excited for everyone to see what happens on Monday night. Now, Matt, as uh, I know, you're always blown away by the uh, athleticism and the, uh, the the never say die attitude. But man, alive the the work that they've done to to stay in that physical shape whenever you know the gyms, everything else was closed. I mean, you got to be even yeah. more impressed this time around, right? Yeah, and I think you know, and the other thing that that, that I think was tough that we we kind of realized was for those athletes, you know, they knew at March, hey, this show was coming. And then when we went on hold, like I, I, they didn't know if this was ever going to happen. So they, you, it's hard to sustain that training. So you know, it was four months between when we were supposed to start and when we eventually got going. And like you said, we, the, the gyms weren't open. Um, you couldn't, you couldn't even, you couldn't go anywhere really to work out. And yet they, they just found a way. And, and what amazed us was when we put the show together. A lot of the ninjas had said, man, I am not in, in the shape I need to be in. 
but they found a way. They found a way uh, to just will themselves through the course, and it was it was it was still a brutally tough course, Cameron. It, it, but it, it always is, man. And uh, now, now, Matt, yeah. for for you in the in the months that uh, that have that have transpired, uh, still being kind of up in the air in the hiatus time. What? How much did you realize how important the show is uh, is to the viewership? Yeah, I, you know, I, I know how I felt how important it was to me. I felt how important it was to be able to do something uh, that felt like before before this pandemic came around, and I think. That's what, that's what we're excited for is, look, I know how it is for me when I'm turning on the TV. There ain't much new on. And I've been through Netflix and, and Amazon Prime and Hulu. And so for us to be able to put this show out, to be able to do it during the pandemic, and to be able to capture so many of the stories, because our ninjas, they're not professional athletes. They are, they're just like everyone else. They're, they're struck, stuck at home. They're struggling to figure out how they're going to work. And we have some people who, who are nurses, uh, firefighters, people who are on the front lines battling this day in and day out. So for them to get to do it, I, I, I think it'll be the same thing where when people watch the show Monday night, I hope it's going to be a reminder of how things were, of, of, of the way they were before, the way they will be again. Um, and you get to see, you know, one of the, it's, it's a show everyone loves to sit around. You can sit around with your kids and sit around with your parents and you can watch a show um, about people, ordinary people, just doing extraordinary things. And I think for a couple hours on every Monday night when you're with us, it, it'll be a way to escape and, and just to remember, like, man, this, this, this show feels, feels the way it did uh, back before all of this craziness started. That's right, and and Matt, for uh, the, the 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 excitement leading into it, uh, American Ninja Warrior, the, the the new season starts Monday night, uh, eight Eastern, seven Central time on NBC. And Matt, always want to make sure and uh, and let our listeners know. I know you got so many other things going on as well, where they can keep up with uh, with everything you got going on social media wise as well, my friend. Yeah, on Twitter, Instagram at Matt Eisen, M A T T. It's I S E M A N and I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm doing live rescue for, for A&E, so tonight, tomorrow night, I'll be live on there and then get ready for Monday night when Ninja Warrior premieres. There you go. Well, Matt, always good to visit with you, my friend. Looking forward to the new Thanks, season, Cameron. and uh, you have a great weekend, my friend. Awesome. Thanks, bud. Like you said, for more information, visit MattEisman.com. Up next is new country singer-songwriter Connor Sweet, whose new single, Times Like These, continues to rise the charts and is so timely, even though it was actually written prior to the pandemic. Connor Sweet on the line, and uh, Connor, again, good to visit with you, my friend. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Now, now Connor, the uh, things have uh, maybe loosened up a little bit, but uh, how has the last uh, the last few weeks since we last talked, how have, uh, how have things gone with the single and uh, the, the feedback that you've been getting, brother? It's going good, man. We're, 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 we're growing uh, little by little, but uh, we, we've gone up in the charts, I think, last week. I haven't seen this week. Last week, we were sitting about 27, and then uh, Billboard, we're sitting at like 42, something like that, so we're... we're Scooching right along there, and uh, we're every week I hear more and more stories about people hearing this song and it really, you know, touching them and, and making them feel good. So, I mean, every week is a blessing. It's just like one week after another, something's good or n- good news. Just it keeps coming. <laughs> and, and with with all the bad that's going on out there, t- the, the the song just touches so many so, so many different emotional uh, uh, emotional strings that it pulls and. Uh, Folks think that this was made for this time, but but this was written actually a few years back as well. Well, it was a few years back, but we we wrote this song uh, about the first week of March. Um, it was around that time that a, a big tornado tore through Nashville, and uh, you know we kind of went into the writer of this song with a great friend of mine, Liz Hingberg, and a good buddy uh, Lance Carpenter, and uh, we went in to write. This is the first time we'd all written together, and uh, we we just started talking, and everybody was kind of had something on their heart going on in their lives, and we are just like, you know, let's just write about that. But let's write it in a positive way. Let's write a song that, you know, people can look to and be inspired by. And so we just started talking, and times like these came out, and, you know, one thing led to another, and we had the song. 
Now, was it obvious after the the completion after the riot was over? Did you know that it was uh, that that was a, an extra special one for you? Was there was there something different about this one for you? Well, the whole thing has been pretty pretty different than normal. Uh, but uh, I, I'm a staff writer in Nashville. I signed the first publishing deal in January of 2019. And uh, as a writer, you go in every day and you write and you do demos. And you know, it's kind of like a little factory. You know, you just keep cranking them out. But uh, this song's different. We, I turned this song into my my team over there, and uh, everybody got back to me pretty quick. Like, yeah, this we need to demo this song. And you know, coronavirus was in the news, but I, I think at the time it was still just on a cruise ship in the Pacific Ocean. You know, it wasn't as big of a deal. You know, uh, but um, you know, one thing led to another. We demoed it right before everything shut down, so we were the only people in the studio. It was me and the guy cutting vocals, and. Uh, we cranked it out, and then it got sent to radio somehow, and here we are. <laughs> they should have never let those folks off that cruise ship. That's all i got to say. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's like everything else. It creeps up on you. But <laughs> Now what? Uh, now, that, now that things have, have opened up, have you have you played any live shows? Uh, I know some folks are doing those little pop-up uh, things like that. Have yeah. you done any of that stuff yet? We, we did one with Lee Bryce. We opened for him up in Milwaukee, a, a good friend of mine, the guy who actually runs our publishing company, uh, he has a metal stamping company, and they did a uh, drive-in show in their parking lot, and it was really cool. And I got to open to meet Lee Bryce. That was fun. And, uh, you know, we've done little things here and there. Uh, we did some uh, parking lot stuff for a few fans that we, we set up in the back of my tailgate, and everybody was socially distanced. And, you know, we, we just played. And, uh, you know, the bars are slowly doing a little bit of a reopen. You know, that's kind of a uh, shaky subject, and it's, it's uncharted waters. You never know. It's, we're kind of taking it week by week, you know. But uh, I, I'm just blessed whenever I get to get up and play music. Yesterday we got to film some stuff uh, here in town uh, for some promo stuff, and we were playing at the Musicians Hall of Fame, and mm-hmm. the acoustics in there are so great. When we got done filming what we were filming, we were like, can we just play for a few minutes? And it, it was just great to be able to play. Now, what uh, when you get to go to the, the, the first full open event, I mean, how hard, how long is it going to take you to get, uh, to, to, to get the, uh, the goosebumps to go away a little bit? Oh, man. <laughs> well, I guess if you don't get nervous doing something, you're not trying hard enough. But to an extent, I get out and I and I, I look at it like a sport. You know, my brother grew up playing baseball and stuff, and my daddy would always say, get up there and put a boot in it. And I kind of put that into my shows, you know what I mean? So I just want people to have a good time, and I'm going to do all I can to make sure they have a good time. So, yeah, I get a little jittery sometimes, but I think the jitters are more now of just anxious and ready to get back at it. And what has been the hardest part of uh, of the being shut down? Has has it allowed you the opportunity to maybe uh, hone in on some of the some of the the the, the, the things that you haven't had the uh, the opportunity to spend the time on? Oh yeah, it's been great. I mean, the the crazy thing about it is is, is you know I, I've spent so much time as as you know a Broadway singer or looking to make money on shows. You know what I mean? And, and trying to book shows out of town and calling work, playing just anywhere we can play. And with everybody shut down and that, you know, that weight kind of off my shoulders, you know, I got to really dive into my writing and dive into, you know, working on this single and, you know, just doing the artist thing for a while. And it, it's been a really refreshing time and uh, it's been really cool. It just, uh, you know, it, this this time has been very rocky and I don't want to make light of it. But in a lot of ways, I think a lot of people have learned to slow down and take a step back in the last few months. I think you're right, Connor. And again, I, w- I want to make sure and let our listeners know uh, not only where they can find uh, the, the new single, but uh, where they can keep up with uh, upcoming tour dates, social media, and all that as well. Well, we have a website, Connor Sweet, C-O-N-N-E-R, Sweet.com, and that'll give you a link to everything. Well, we're on uh, we're on Spotify, we're on iTunes, we're on Amazon Music, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. So just go to ConnorSweet.com, and that'll give you your uh, you know buffet of ways to find me. <laughs> Well, there you go. And, uh, Connor, always good to visit with you, my friend. Uh, continued safety on you guys, and uh, hopefully we can catch up again real soon, my friend. Likewise, Cameron. Thank you for having me. For more information on merch, upcoming tour dates, music, and more, visit connorsuite.com. Our next guest is Jeff Benedict, best selling author of 16 nonfiction books, including the number one New York Times bestseller, Tiger Woods. We'll be talking about his new book, Dynasty 
a tell-all on the New England Patriots. We like a lot of sports. We like some NFL football. And, uh, well, when you talk NFL football, the conversation, (laughs) not surprisingly, ends up turning to the Patriots. And uh, this morning we're going to talk about the new book that is out by Jeff Benedict, The Dynasty. And first off, Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, now, Jeff, the, the, the dynasty, when, when did you first uh, sit down with uh, the, the, the first plans on, on writing the book in the first place? Well, I thought about writing this book for a long time, but I didn't actually start, you know, working on it, per se, until uh, the summer of 2018. So two, I spent two years on it, um, but I made my first outreach to the team uh, in early in 2018, like in, you know, in the springtime. Now, what was uh, what was the first uh, reaction from the, from the Patriots organization and, and others around that uh, w- when you were trying to get information? Were they were they open or was it kind of uh, closed off uh, uh, originally for you? You know, I, I'm not really sure how to answer that because the way the reason I say that is because the the way that I went about it is, I mean, you have to keep in mind that I'm a total stranger to them at the start of this. They don't know me, and I don't know them. I'd never. I'm not like a football writer who covered this team. So they had no um, prior experience with me, and, and nor did I with them. So the way this started was by me writing a letter to the owner, Robert Kraft, and introducing myself and explaining in writing what I wanted to do. And in response to that letter, I got a letter back from him, and which su- frankly surprised me. I, did, I wasn't anticipating that. Um, but I, I was really intrigued by that. It, it made me want to know him more. Um, and that led to, you know, conversations and meetings and just, you know, to, to figure out uh, and get an understanding of what, what I was trying to set out to do. So I never really thought too much about, you know, how people were reacting. Just It's like in any other situation when you're working on a big project. You, you, you need to build some rapport with the people that you want to write about. Um, if you're going to, you know, be inside an organization or be around someone or go into someone's life. And so I was doing what I always do uh, in these situations and just it takes some time. And then eventually by the fall, um, you know, I, I actually started on the project. Now, what is uh, what was maybe the, uh, the 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 biggest surprise was was there a did you have any misconceived notions going in that uh, that maybe once things opened up you were like aha and uh, a bit of a surprise for you? Well, I went in. So the the only preconceptions that I brought with me into the project were were the two that attracted me to the project in the first place, which was number one, uh, I, I had. In my mind, I was looking at the greatest sports dynasty of, of the 21st century. So that's a starting point for me. And I'm thinking, okay, how did they do this? How did they build it? And then once they built it, how did they sustain it for so much longer than anyone else has been able to do? Those were my two central questions. And my premise was I was dealing with the best, uh, looking at the best. And that's it. But the truth was I had never met. Uh, the owner of this team. I'd never met the head coach. I'd never met the quarterback. And I didn't know the players. And so I didn't have a lot of preconceptions about what had happened because I didn't know. You know, that's the thing. I think that there's, in other words, there's a, there is an advantage to not knowing and, and going in with, you know, like an open mind and a fresh slate. And that's what I did. I was, you know, I was looking at a blank canvas and just wanting to start filling it in. And, and when you look at the dynasty of the Patriots, is it is it something that the that the blueprint that they followed to to get to success and continue that is that something uh, that others can follow, or or does it just take you getting a Tom Brady in your opinion? Well, I think you know the, I, I don't consider myself a business writer at all, but one of the things that I felt as I was researching and then even writing the dynasty is that wow, you know, there's a there's a lot of lessons in this thing. Um, you don't even actually have to care about football, never mind the Patriots, but there's so many lessons in the way they do things that, that are portable. In other words, if you're an entrepreneur or you run your own business or you, you run a company or you're trying to start a company, there's a lot of things to be learned from the way that Robert Kraft runs his business, the way Bill Belichick coaches, and the way Tom Brady prepares to do his job. And so 
there were times where I felt like I was writing a manual on how to, you know, how to be successful at something. And, but it's not a manual, it's a story, you know, and you're, you're sort of in the room with these guys. But I think that, uh, so, you know, that's one thing. But could any team do what they're doing? No. I think that, you know, the genius here that you've got a quarterback and a head coach that are once in a lifetime figures. You know, there's, there is no other coach like Bill Belichick. And um, we've never seen another player in the history of the NFL like Tom Brady. I mean, he's 43 and he's still, he's still performing as if he's in his late twenties. And so I think that uh, those things, you, you can't just remanufacture those in another team. But what, what is really interesting here is how you keep those two together functioning, how to suppress and manage egos. There's a lot of things that go on um, in the management side of this that I think is that, that looks now to owners, ownership and executive decision-making. And the crisis management, they've uh, they've dealt with crises as as well as uh, as well as actually probably better than could be expected as well. Uh, again, the the new book, uh, The Dynasty, is available now. And uh, Jeff, I want to make sure and let our listeners know where they can find out more information about the book and uh, other things you've got going on as well. Sure, I mean at my web website, jeffbenedict.com, is all the information about the book and uh, tour schedules and everything else that's happening. And obviously the book is available everywhere, like Amazon and on down. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you again uh, for your time this morning. Really enjoyed that and looking to looking forward to spending some more time with the book as well. Thank you very much. Find more information on all of his writing at jeffbenedict.com. And our final guest is legendary drummer Sheila E., who just got nominated for an Emmy for musical director for the Grammy Salute to Prince and her master class in drumming is available now we've talked about the the career we've talked memoirs a little bit but uh, i'm excited to uh, you got nominated for an emmy i wanted to talk about uh, about that and what was uh, what was it like uh, your personal feelings whenever you got notified first off um i was very excited of course um and i'm i'm humbled and um you know it, it takes a team it takes a village this is for everyone who was involved uh just to be nominated, so it's a it's a great uh, it's a great uh, thing to be nominated. It really is. And and this is uh, man alive. Talk about uh, a career that the, the music has been your life. I mean, from from the very ver, the very beginning. And this is something I, I Sheila. I don't know that we've ever really talked about the the origins of where the love of music first uh, first came for you when when you knew that it was in your in your blood, if you will. Yeah, I started playing when I was really young because of my dad. He's still a percussion player, Latin jazz artist, and played around the house every single day, practiced, and even brought his band. We rehearsed in the living room. Um, so there was music in the house every day. And uh, just growing up in that environment, I was very inspired to do so. Uh, to, be, <laughs> to be a musician, I wasn't sure until about 15 years old when I played with my dad again, and there was something about that show that performance that just took me to another place. I just thought, oh, my God, this is what heaven is like. I want to feel like I'm in heaven every single day. I, I want to do this. This is it. Two weeks later, I started going out on tour with my dad professionally and never turned back. <laughs> now, I, I know you talked about uh, your dad and having bands and friends coming together and playing. Is Now, has that been something that, uh, that, that once you grew up and, and moved out, was that kind of the way you did things as well? Uh, pretty much. I mean, yeah, I, I, I kind of did and do, did some of the same things my my dad, uh, learning by, by watching him as well, being a leader, how to, to how to do things, you know, how to manage things. Um, you know, uh, he's just an amazing person. Now, the the, the, the philanthropy side of things, uh, you, you have made an impact on so many people's lives beyond what, what your music has touched. And uh, where, did, where did the inspiration for, for helping others, where, where did that come in for you in your life? That came through uh, my parents, again, just being influenced by, um, by them. Early on, my dad was... Uh, at a young age was left in an orphanage for a couple of years uh, when he was young and it, it was devastating for him and so uh, when he had us kids um, 
would take us to facilities <clears throat> for other kids who didn't have a lot and said, we're going to put the percussion in the and whatever instruments we have, put them in the car, we're going to drive to these facilities, and we're going to help you know these kids. And, and if we can just you know put a smile on one of these kids' faces, then we've done something great. And it doesn't matter that we don't have much. They have less than we do. We're going to go over there. And so that's what they constantly did. We would play for the community centers. Uh, my dad took us, my parents took us everywhere uh, to play for all of these different uh, community centers and kids and uh, our, our whole life started. And and Sheila, I know you've also had an opportunity got a got a master class for anyone uh, that, that wants to learn drumming as well from you. And and Sheila, how did how did that get approached to you? Uh, well, again, I always tell people that if you want to do something, you write it down, write your goals, your desires, and things you want to accomplish on a on a list. And it, it was on my bucket list, and uh, it just so happened at the beginning of the year we were able to do it, and it came out, and we're just excited about it. Um, we, um, you know, they asked if I wanted to do it. I was like, are you kidding? I, I actually cried about that as well. I was like, this is on my list. Are you kidding me? Uh, because I, I I took the class when it first came out. I took the, I took many classes. I was like, oh, my God, I want to learn about this. I want to learn about directing, writing a script, um, you know, uh, how to cook. Um, there's so many things, watching Stephen Curry. I mean, just people telling their stories and, and what drives them, you know. And then now I get the opportunity to do the same thing, and I, I explain to people, you know, I can teach you how to play drums in two minutes. They're like, there's no way. Well, yeah, uh, there there is a way to do it, and, and you don't have to spend money uh, purchasing drums and percussion that learn how to play on the tables, on your legs, you know, on a surface, and then you start, and then you gradually move up to the pots and pans. I mean, everyone has pots and pans, and that's where I learned how to play, and you go on from there. That's awesome. Now, Sheila, of course, uh, if folks want to find out not only more about the uh, the, the master class, but uh, the, the, the memoir and everything else you've got going on, where's the best place to find all that info? You can go on to SheilaE.com and check that out. Uh, and you, on my social media is Sheila E. Drummer, and also you can go to my Sheila E. Tube channel. We just uh, curated an event uh, called We Stand Together, and it's uh, for my nonprofit it, Elevate Oakland, as well as uh, Black Lives Matter, Global Network, NYR Media. We have Stevie Wonder performing, Let Us See the Tonys. Uh, there's so many people, comedians, uh, activists. Uh, it's a great, it's up right now, and you can uh, check it out and even donate if you'd like to help. We're still trying to raise money to uh, make sure that our students get some kind of education during this time if they're not going to school. So we're doing virtual classes and teaching the history of music history of music all right well again uh, the website sheila e.com and uh, find links to all the others as well sheila always great to visit with you hope you have a great rest of your week and uh, look forward to talking again real soon my friend thank you so much find out more at sheila e.com Thanks again for joining us for this episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. And if you ever have a comment, question, or anything else you'd like to know, find me on Instagram at aka underscore Cameron, on Twitter at Cameron Dole, on my Facebook page at Cameron Dole Altus. If you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast, feel free to click on the support tab and follow the instructions. We'll see you soon for episode 12.